Welcome back to episode three of our Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Nuzlocke Challenge. Now just a brief reminder of the rules. All normal rules apply. You have to nickname your Pokemon. can only use the first one you encounter per route. And if a Pokemon goes down, they are down for the whole game. Other than that, if Pikachu faints, the game is over. And we must catch every Pokemon possible to complete our live-in Pokedex. Last time, we caught Kiki the Mankey, Frankie evolved into Butterfree, Giga evolved into Beedrill, we caught Roxy the Geodude, and Jerry the Ratatata. After that, we defeated Misty, earning ourselves the Cascade Badge. Misty told us we should head over to the daycare, where they were looking for a strong trainer. Here we go. Turns out the daycare didn't want to fight, but instead she's looking for a strong trainer to hand over this Bulbasaur to. So we take the Bulbasaur, name it Caesar, and throw it on our team. We decide to send Frankie back to Professor Oak since, you know, truthfully I could tell it missed Giga. Eager to get our next badge, we try to run, but Officer Jenny won't let us leave town due to Team Rocket and some pesky Squirtle activity. She tells us to go challenge Nugget Bridge, and by the time we're done, Everything should be cleared up, and we could be on our way. But before we can even step foot onto the bridge, Josh comes running out, freaking out about some talking Pokemon. In all of his delusion and delirium, he actually thinks he can beat us in a battle. Turn 1. Pika vs Pidgey. Pika uses Zippy Zap. Done. We use Zippy Zap. Gets the KO. Eevee comes out, and wouldn't you know, Zippy Zap gets the Oko again. This move is so overpowered, and I love it. We end up taking out trainers 1 through 5 on Nugget Bridge. The final trainer is revealed to actually be a member of Team Rocket. They ask us if we want to join. We honestly reply yes. They do not believe us, so we battle. On Route 24, we catch a Psyduck and name it Misty after the gym leader we just bodied. This dude over here sucks at raising Pokemon, so he gives us a Charmander. We name it Red. In an attempt to complete my live-in Pokedex, I decide it's best to keep a rotating team roster during the playthrough. By doing this, I can evolve as many of my Pokemon as possible, helping to complete the task. Even though it's sad to send some friends back, we decide Rocket, Debbie, and Kaido should go hang out with Professor Oak for a bit. You know, keep Frankie and Giga company. This allows us to make space for Roxy, Misty, and Red to join the team. Route 25 is full of trainers. Caesar evolves, Red evolves, we catch an Oddish, name it Steve, battle another coach trainer, and then enter Bill's house to meet... Wait, there's actually a talking Pokemon here? Oh, no, it's just the super scientist who turned himself into a Pokemon. Super reasonable explanation, Josh. We help Bill by turning him back into a human. He's so thrilled he gives us a few tickets to the SSN. And like that, we're on our way back to Cerulean City. Officer Jenny's finally gone, so we're able to head into the crime scene, sneak out the back, fight the thief, and do their job for them. On Route 5, we meet Kirby the Jigglypuff and share a sweet moment with Josh before heading on to Route 6. Here we catch Zuku the Growlithe, fight some trainers, and finally make it to Vermilion City. Officer Jenny gives us a Squirtle as a thank you for stopping Team Rocket. This guy gives us some clothes. We bring back Rocket and Debbie, switch them out for Roxy and Misty, then we head to the gym. But apparently they have a landscaping problem, and the only man who can cut down this bush is the captain of the SSN. Luckily, Bill gave us some tickets, so we had a board. Once aboard the SSN, we run into Josh and Blue. The three of us discuss Team Rocket before Blue runs off, leaving us to fight everyone aboard. And I mean everyone. All of the guests, all of the crew, everyone goes down on this ship. We finally make it to the captain's room, but Josh won't let us pass without a fight. Guess it's your turn. Now that we've finally met the captain, he teaches Pika how to use cut or chop down or whatever they call it in this game. And before you know it, we can finally go fight Lieutenant Surge. But you know, this dude was in the military, he's a little scary, so we decided to do some training over on Route 11. It's there we meet Sigmund the Drowsy, 
Debbie decides to take the Moonstone and evolve into Nitto Queen. We catch another Drowsy and a Mr. Mime to send back to Professor Oak. Then it's finally time for the third gym battle. After we, you know, dig through some trash, obviously. Turn one, Voltorb versus Debbie. Voltorb uses Swift, Debbie uses Bite, another Swift, and a double kick from Debbie to take out Voltorb. Surge sends out Magnemite, but that doesn't stand a chance against Debbie and her double kick. So it's finally time for Surge's ace, Raichu. I use a super potion on Debbie, Raichu goes for a quick attack since electric moves are unaffected to Debbie. Ever since she evolved, she gained the ground typing, which makes her immune. After a bunch of bites and a few quick attacks, we've finally done it. Raichu goes down, and we gain our Thunder Badge. Three badges in, and 35 Pokemon out of 150 for our living Pokedex. So far, so good. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please hit subscribe so that way you can be notified as soon as I upload a new episode. I have a lot of fun making these, and I hope you enjoy them. I'll see you in the next one.